Greetings, everyone. This is sort of a follow-up. I did a very short review of GIMP 2.10, and you'll hear some trucks in the background. I have the window open. I'm sorry. I did a very short review of GIMP 2.10, where I basically said the program is unusable and you shouldn't bother using it. They have developed GIMP 2.10 to a point where my recommendation is the polar opposite of what I was saying back when I made that video. GIMP 2.10 is pretty awesome, and I think that if you are still using GIMP 2.8 or if you saw my earlier video, you should definitely give 2.10 a chance. There are some features that I really enjoy. Um, let me just show you one of the things I do with my video thumbnails. Uh, let's make a thumbnail for this video right now. GIMP 2.10 has become awesome, and maybe we'll uh, shrink that text just a bit. I still don't like this floating translucent box. Um, I've, I've always kind of hated that in GIMP, but there's not much to be done about it. So I'll put the text over here. And here's where I get to show you the cool thing. <clears throat> this is actually how I make my cool new thumbnails. So I'll have something, I'll render some text. Then I'll convert the text to path, and I'm sorry, I have a bigger display than what's recording right now. So, uh, there we go, text to path. Then I'll make a new layer. New layer, uh, okay. And then I'll duplicate it, right click U, right click U. Now I have three blank layers. So I've converted this text to a path. Now here's what I'll do. Set the foreground color to black. Stroke path. You could do this in the old versions of GIMP as well. So now we have outline text. Then I'll flip it again. Stroke path. And I'll make it a little bit bigger. And it'll stroke it in white. And then next layer stroke path and I'll make that even bigger stroke it in white okay now where am I going with this I'll pick the first layer of white text and we'll go to colors colorize and you see this colorize bring the lightness down to about half saturation all the way up pick a color any color what color do we want the glow to be Let's make the glow for this one. Let's make it kind of... I think I'll go with red. Yeah, let's go with red. Yeah, let's red is... It's going to just be a classic red glow. And then for the whoosh, what color should we do the whoosh? Colorize. Lightness about half. Saturation up. What color should the whoosh be? What's well, red. Let's make it purple, kind of a purple tone. That's kind of hot pink, isn't it? Uh, yeah, more like that. Okay. All right, now here, you can still, all this stuff is stuff you could do before. Gaussian blur. Just give it a little bit of a blur so it has that glow factor to it. Right? Okay. And then the next layer down that's bigger, Gaussian blur. No. Nope. Now, let's do something a little different. Blur. This is what you can't do in 2.8. Zoom motion blur. Boom. Oh, yeah. Now, check this out. So, we're going to take this center X and Y and the blurring factor. First of all, I'm going to make the blurring factor negative, which causes it to suck in towards the center point. See? That's cool. That's really cool. But look it's not whooshing towards the center of the picture, it's whooshing towards this point. I, w I want it to whoosh up into the left. So let's move it. Okay, see it following? Yep, that's kind of what I'm going for. I don't really want it that far away. Yep, you can see the definition of the letters there. That's pretty cool. Yep, I think that's good. Okay, that's going to be the thumbnail to this video. And just to make things a little cooler, one of the other things I've been doing recently is I will put a little muting on this background. So let's make another layer and let's fill it with black. 
and then we need to mask it off. So let's add a layer mask. Um, don't really care what. Let's do a gradient and make it a shape. Let's make it, what's the shape I want? Is it radial? I think so. <clears throat> Let's strike some gradients here. Look at this. Uh, no, that didn't do what I wanted. Let's see. Yeah, so you see it's making wherever I start black and the rest is ruined. Uh, let's do this. So, I'm not... It's been a while since I've done this. Okay, I think I'm going to switch back to linear. Yeah, because it's a lot more understandable. Yep, so that's what it's supposed to do there. Alright, so we're going to use a gradient to make the corner dim. And that's going to be it. So I'll go ahead and export this, and that'll be the end of that. Hope this helps. Give GIMP 2.10 a try, and uh, it'll probably replace 2.8 for you. Have a wonderful day. I hope this helps.